Hey guys, welcome to the Positive Experience Podcast, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today's segment is on the hard slog, where we shine the light on small local businesses. Hey guys, how are you going? My name's Lecky Sisfer. I'm the host of the Positive Experience Podcast, where we look at the good, the bad, and the ugly in living your best life. Today, I've got David McCarthy, who's visiting us here today. And um, just to go through some of the accolades here with David and his business, um, this particular segment is called The Hard Slog. So we're looking at um, small businesses that are doing great work in our community. Um, we're looking here at Wyndham Business Award Trade Finalist in 2017, 2019. We're looking at the new and emerging Wyndham Business winner in 2016. Um, David will go through um, quite a lot of his businesses as one of the directors or the director of, of DMP. Um, he's also involved in a business networking international BNI chapter in the Western Connections. Um, he's a member of Master Plumbing, uh, sorry, Master Plumbers Association of Victoria, a National Council representative, um, and he's a member of Wyndham Business. So he's very, very involved. Uh, welcome, Dave. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us, mate. Good man. So, um, quick story. I actually slid into. Um, I think DMPs, uh, DMs on Instagram. And I just reached out and I said, hello, uh, we'd love to have a chat to you guys. I actually found them through the Wyndham Business uh, hashtag. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, David and um, Kat were gracious enough to say thank you. So I just want to say thanks, mate, for, for no, joining No, no worries. No, it's a, it's, it's a great concept and we're, we're you know, happy to be on board for sure. Good man. So let's, before we dive into the business side of things, David, I'd, I'd like to know a little bit about the backstory. So yep. if you don't mind telling us uh, about where you were a seedling, where you, where you yep. born, where you, where you grew up. Yeah, so I, uh, I grew up in Colac in uh, the Western District of Victoria yep. on a dairy farm. So I've got uh, three brothers yep. and uh, those three brothers are still on the dairy farm now. So I'm, I'm the black sheep out of the four of us. Uh, okay. I, I branched out. So I uh, grew up in a, yeah, outside of a small town and... Um, I uh, did a few jobs in the in the farming sector first and then got into plumbing when I was about 19. Okay, good man. So you were born in the Western Districts, Colax, kind of beyond Geelong. Yeah, yeah, about yeah. an hour and a half from Melbourne. So down okay. in, in the sort of southwest, so you're between halfway between Melbourne and Warrnambool. Okay, and before we get into the plum, plumbing game, uh, would you shed some light on, on the home situation? So, um, you know, kids at home, do you have a lot of heavy uh, dogs? Yeah, yeah so um, busy busy household. So my beautiful wife, Kat, who's also my business partner, and then we've got uh, two beautiful children, Sadie, who's five, and Harry, who's three and a half. Yep. Uh, we've got a beagle named Buddy, a cat named Betsy, and two chooks. So oh, mate. It's busy. It is, absolutely. It's a busy house. So the household's busy. Um, you mentioned you're in Colac. When did you find your way to the western suburbs here? Um, you... It wasn't until uh, probably seven years ago. So from uh, from Colac, I moved to Perth, where I met my wife, Kat, and my business partner. So I met her in Perth in uh, 2008, I think it was. Cool. Um, and then we moved to London. So I did plumbing wow. in Perth, then London, then ended up back in, in uh, the western suburbs of Melbourne. Okay, so I'm just um, the reason why I'm going back. I'm just trying to draw a line from where you are today to where you were. Yep. So trade school and all that was completed in Victoria. Then yep. you shot off to Perth. Yep. Shot off to Perth. So I did all, all my trade school in Geelong. So I used to drive up every day from Colac to Geelong and do trade school uh, yep. once a month for a week. Yep. And then yeah, post that heap of mates moved to to Perth. So we took off over there for a look. Awesome. And yeah. were you suburban Perth or country? Uh, suburban Perth, yep. yep. Okay. So down the beach in Scarborough is where we lived. So beautiful okay. spot. So do you have a soft spot for the Dockers or uh, you know, no. for the Eagles? No, or no, um, Hawthorne. 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 Oh, jeez. I would have yeah, thought Geelong yeah. there. Okay. No, no. You Hawthorne can't make any assumptions. Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> Okay, so because um, you know, I'm doggies, but I got a soft spot for the crows. I grew up in Adelaide. Yeah, yeah. So during okay. the Tony Modra era. Yeah, oh, nice. That was a good era. So okay, so now we're in the UK, and then from the UK you spent a bit of time in Europe, and then you you landed back on your feet here in in Melbourne. Yep. So I did a similar role. So I went from um, being a fourth year apprentice in Colac, having worked in the country, to then. Got to, to Perth and um, started working for a construction company doing plumbing there for a while and had um, a really good mentor who said, here's 30 guys, here's 200 units, off you go. Okay. So, you know, just out of my apprenticeship, got a really hard, uh, fast learning error and then picked up a lot of skills there for three or four years and went to, to London and did a similar role for the one of the largest construction companies in, um, wow. in the UK. So really good role. Uh, and then um, did that for four years, which again was, was just great character building. Then then we decided to come back to, to Melbourne. So and then we 
Okay. Worked for a couple of companies around around Melbourne and then uh, decided to, to try it on our own. So it seems like you're at like a buffet. You were sort of tasting lots of things, you know, yeah. getting stuck in. Yeah. And then did you start to narrow down on a specific type of caper within the plum- plumbing game that you enjoyed? No, like, I guess I, you know, I started plumbing for the variety, really. I just loved the variety of plumbing and what it could bring in the different aspects. And that's still what we base our business on today is, is you know, that variety and giving our guys the variety, which I think is... You know, is the way to keep everyone's mind sharp. Yep. Something different, you know, almost every hour of the day, which is, which is great. You know, um, so I'm a health guy, obviously. I went to school and got the expensive piece of paper. I think the model in trade school where you have the master and apprentice is really important because you were a young pup and yep. then you learnt off some big brains and then you started to sharpen the knives and then now the roles have switched and we'll get into that in a minute. So, um, you know, I think there's a lot of value in trade school with the master and apprentice model. Was there a particular, co- uh, I was about to say coach, um, mentor that you, you, man, you know, old mate Bob, he just showed me how to plumb this and that, you know, was is there someone that you can sort yeah, of want to shout out to? It was definitely uh, Wayne Alexander, my first boss who went through my apprenticeship with. So he he taught me how to do it properly the first time. Okay. If I didn't get it right, we pulled it all out and did it again. Yep. And, you know, that was obviously a hard lesson to start off, but it's always stuck with me that, you know, you know keep to the standard that you walk past. So, you yep. know, that's always stuck with me, which we've taken all the way through. So that's probably it. Been, uh, been really good for me all the way just to make sure you get it right the first time. Congratulations, because, uh, you know, that first coach could have stuffed you up. But, yeah, you that's know, exactly actually, right. Yep. Yeah, he actually did a good yeah, thing exactly. by it. So, okay, so the timeline is you've landed back in Melbourne um, after your foray into the UK. Yep. Um, what was your aha moment? Were you just slogging it away working for someone you thought, man, this is the time? Or were you subbing for, subcontracting for yeah, a while? Yeah, I'd, I'd um, gone into a bit of union work in the city for a couple of different companies and it just wasn't for me. It was too hustle bustle. We lived in the in the CBD to start out yep. and we just craved a, a backyard really. So then we bought uh, we bought a block and we moved out to, to Point Cook and we built a house and then I started yeah, working for others and then I was just like, no, I, I need... I think I could do it a better my way and you okay. know, and provide a great service to the local community. So and that's, that's what we did. And that was 2008? Uh, no, that was 2000. We started the business six years ago, 2014, oh, okay. yes. I think it that's was. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Cool. So 2014. And then so if we transition now into the main passion, so at the moment – uh, give me an idea of what it's like in the driver's seat. So uh, is it still, you know, the tools on the utility belt or, you know, give us an idea of the team that you're running? Yep. So uh, we've got 14 staff. Um, we've got a full-time operations manager, a full-time client relationship manager and a full-time accounts person. Wow. So they're the, the main three key roles that we've, we've tried to put in place to, uh, I guess, to buy me and cap time to, to sort of grow the business and get... Um, the systems and processes that need to be put in place to, to get where we want to get to. How quick did you get there? Was that in the first, so six years long, so in the first couple of years you were wearing lots of hats, you and Kat were... Yeah, wearing lots of hats, so Kat still worked full-time uh, okay. for her previous role uh, and I was, yeah, just running around like a, you know, my head chopped lunatic, off, yeah, yeah, like a lunatic everywhere. <laughs> uh, and then we, you know, slowly put staff on and, you know, uh, we, our, yeah, First full-time employee started five years ago as of not long, you know, just into end of January, I think. So I think I saw that on yeah, your Yeah, Insta, yeah, yeah. So we celebrated Paul's five years, who's now our operations manager. So he's gone from starting out the first week. We said, you know, Fridays might be quiet. You might be quiet on Monday mornings. And I don't think he's had a quiet Friday or Monday. And now yeah. he's the ops manager. So, you know, it's great to see where he's got to in five years and how he's helped us grow the business. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, Right now, where you are is maybe quite different from where you were six years ago. Um, but what would you say is your main passion? You know, what gets you out of, of bed every day at the minute driving the business? Um, probably what gets me out of bed at the moment is just honing skills um, and trying to get our systems and processes set up to a point where the company runs itself. Okay. Um, that's, that's our 10-year goal. Yep. So I've, I've already said our 10-year goal is to be redundant in 10 years. Yeah, make so yourself redundant. Make myself redundant. So it'll, you know, I want to make sure that I walk in the door and I really don't have a job to do because yep. I think that's when you know you've, you know, you've got all your systems and processes right and everyone knows their roles yep. and know how they fit into the structure of the company. Okay. So, so the premise of um, the Positive Experience podcast here is we're looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly and living your best life. So, um, you know, there's a lot of gems here that you've already shared with us, David. Um, if you were to highlight something good or something bad that you were grateful that happened, because, for example, uh, in the health space, if you copped an injury, 
it can really sharpen up some other things like your personal development and dealing with setbacks. Yeah, it, it doesn't have to be something tangible to the trade. Could you give us an idea of uh, something good or bad that you're grateful for? Uh, I'm probably grateful most for my wife, Kat, being in the business. Good man. Um, I think it's, it's very hard for a husband and wife uh, in, a, in any business, in, in any, you know, any area of business, to, to work and collaborate together because you know, small business is hard and you do take your emotional side home every day. Yeah. And it's, it's great to be able to go home to someone who knows what I'm going through to throw ideas around to. And you know, we both live the business 24-7, so I'm just grateful I can go home and know that she understands exactly what has happened to me during my day yep. and, and then how we, you know, how we collaborate together and the way that we fit into the company and, and bring different attributes to the company. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for that, that it, it works well for us. Yeah, okay, shout out to Cap there, yeah, shout David out to Kat. here. He's definitely building up the brownie points, so he's doing very, very well. Um, okay, so good and the bad, you've uh, got an A-plus mark there for that answer, awesome. If we're looking at something ugly, what I mean by ugly is something that you're working on that you haven't yielded fruit just yet. Yep. So for example, you may have switched up a, you know, a food plan so you can shed a few kilos. I think when you're wearing a lot of hats and you're going 100 miles an hour, sometimes your health can go by the wayside. Yep. And you don't want to get to the 10-year goal and then... You know, you you may not be where you want it to be in other aspects. You know, so yeah. Is there something that you're working on? That yeah, time? there is. So I, I guess at the moment I'm not there, but I'm trying to get there. Is you know the the staff that we're putting on to buy time, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know when you're wearing all the hats, you are doing 50, 60, 70 hours a week. You're working seven days, and you don't look after your health. It's usually the last thing that you you take care of, really. Um, so you know that's what I'm trying to to get into a bit of a routine of the moment to get back to that fitness goal of being just healthy, really. Yep. So that when I do run around with the kids, I'm not I'm not puffed out. Yeah. So you know, David's running a business along with Cat here, with um, heading towards a team of almost twenty. Um, you heard he's got a full house at home plus a few pets, and uh, he's doing a great job in trying to win the time back. So the reason why we dive into the, the personal stories here is because. Um, behind this big machine that uh, is being driven is a real person, you know, with real things that um, he's, he's goal setting towards. So, man, big pat on the back. Yeah, cheers. Um, if I was to pull your phone out and uh, I switch on Instagram, who would be someone that you're following online? Someone that, um, you know, you're interested in what they're getting up to, maybe someone you aspire to or something um, out of interest? I'm following um, a couple of different ones. Obviously, um, Tony, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Robinson. Tony Robinson, yeah, Tony Robinson, I'm a big fan of. I uh, cool. follow a lot of his stuff, uh, and there's a few others, uh, sort of smaller plumbers around the place. I always follow as well because I, I like to see what everyone else is up to. I just say the good, bad, and the ugly of everyone because yep, you know, it, it's good to see everyone's everyone's uh, good and bad side because we, we all have bad days and we all have good days. So. Yep. Yeah, just getting a measure of what's happening out yeah, the market. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. How are people putting themselves out there. Have you been to like Unleash the Power Within or any of the Tony Robbins events? No, I haven't. I've listened to a lot of his uh, his CDs in the car, um, right. yeah. and there's a few others like um, the Seven Habits and a lot of different ones like that. I listen to in traffic because uh, you know sitting in traffic, you spend a lot of time working through your, your mental state of where you need to be and what you're doing, but you can't get anywhere. Yeah. So I found the the best way to get around that is to put a podcast on. Like of a you know as we call just sharpening the saw. Yep. So you know just trying to mentally think about different things, but actually be able to sit there and contain yourself rather than jumping out of your skin. You can do nothing about it sitting in traffic. Absolutely. And just on that, because you'd be crisscrossing the roads here in Melbourne, where's your the worst road in Melbourne? Like the intersection where you get bottled and bottlenecked. Um, so to buy you some time, I remember Main West Road in St Albans was pretty bad with a you know with the train yeah, crosses over. Yeah. Um, in Hawthorne, there's like five roads that come together. I don't know what they're. That, uh, I think it was the worst. worst well, spot. for me, it's trying to get home. So it's Point Cook Road and Sneed Road is the worst. Oh, so yeah. it is. It's the. I just want to go home. It's the end of the day. Yeah. I've done twelve hours or whatever. I just want to go home, and I can't turn right. Yeah. Just give me a set of traffic lights, please. <laughs> I just need to get home. Yeah. Well, we're hopeful that all the duplications around here, yeah, you know, Leeds Road, all that, it opens up. So I empathise, big fella. Yeah. Hopefully you can see the finish line soon. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, so um, down the home stretch here, I'd just love to speak more about um, DMP and if there's anything that you'd like to share with the audience. Um, we had a bit of a snapshot of all the accolades, so you guys are definitely on the right track, obviously. Yeah, yep. Um, you know, what would you like to share with the audience? Um, oh, I, I guess that you know we're we're a company that's trying to do the right thing, and we're, we're trying to um, 
keep our employees engaged and make sure everyone is is you know happy and talented as we, as we were trying you know that's one of our mottos is happy talented plumbers yep and that's what we're trying to promote that you know we're offering flexibility to our employees and making sure that there's plenty of time off as well as time in the job to to ensure that you know you do get that time away as well as within so now, I think a, a big thing here is, um, you know, the testament of the leaders is the team. And so, you know, if the team are well trained and they're happy, then they'll go out there and do a great job so that, you know, the end customer there is going to be happy with the end product. So, um, you know, this is the first time that I've met David. David's met me for the first time. You know, we're having a good chat here. But you can just gauge from, you know, how passionate David's talking about his business and his main passion. And having a great team offside or at home and in the business in CAT. Um, mate, I just want to congratulate you, and it yeah, sounds thanks. like that you're well on your way. Um, is there wh- where are the best places to, to reach you on online? Is it um, uh, yeah, DM- so Instagram and Facebook uh, and LinkedIn as well. Um, it's probably the best place to find us. We're, we're most active on the, on the social networks. So yeah, the best way to get a hold of us. Well, I'd say you're the most active plumbers that I've come across, which is awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was part of our, our plan. We we put together probably 12 or 18 months ago. I think it was now. We sat down and and put an action plan together for two years and where we wanted to be and our goals and uh, we're really starting to achieve those goals now and turn around and you know turn it into the business we want it to be. Who drives it? Who drives the business? Uh, no, sorry, the social media stuff. Kat yeah. does. Kat does all the social media. So she looks after the campaigns the whole lot, start yeah. to finish. Mate, I'm trying to get these branding points for you. You're, you're yeah, right. no, I'll tell you what, you can walk straight in, it's good. It's good. <laughs> okay, and is there any last, uh, last, last comments that you have for us? Um, regarding your plans for, for 2020. Let's see what the rest of 2020 looks like for you. Uh, 2020 is a, a great year for us because, as I say, we've been working on our action plans now for almost 18 months and we're starting now to see probably the fruits of our labour. In, in the background, it was probably a hard slog for, for a while we're trying to get all the different systems and processes in place we wanted to. And, and now we're starting to see that and, and you know, everyone within our team is starting to see it. So it's a great year for us. We're really looking forward to all the challenges and prospects that are going to come up. So, Mate, awesome. So David's joined us here today representing DMP. Um, I just want to say thank you, David, for joining us here today and, and spreading the gospel on his passions uh, within plumbing, but also other avenues that he's looking to reach you guys to do a great job. So uh, to this video, we'll post the links to all their socials on LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, and uh, we'll keep connected. And I'd love to go for a round two at some point, mate. So, you know, in six to 12 months from now, we'd love to sit down and have a chat and maybe talk about why a a Geelong boy is going for Hawthorne. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Cheers.